Greetings, everybody. Open your King James Bible to Jeremiah chapter 14. That's Jeremiah 14. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah Commentary. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 14, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Huh. What is dearth? Well, take out the R, what do you have? Death. According to Webster's 1828, which I'll tell you what, I can't say enough good things about Webster's 1828. Dearth. A noun. Scarcity, want, need, famine, barrenness, sterility, as in the de dearth of a plot of land, you know, uh, like a desert or something. Uh, there was a dearth of wheat in the Great Famine. Uh, that would be a proper sentence, I, I'm guessing. So dearth has reference to scarcity and lack of. Famine. So, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish, they are black under the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And the nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. Oh, that would explain the famine. You know, when you don't have any water, plants don't grow. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Because the ground is chapped. Uh, you ever, you know, in the winter, you ever have chapped lips? Yeah, they're cracked. The ground is cracked. Have you ever seen a, a riverbed, it's all cracked. You know, the mud just cracked. Yeah. Because the ground is chapped, for there was no rain in the earth, the plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Yea, the hind also calved in the field and forsook it because there was no grass. Yeah, the cattle and the animals were having their calves in the field, and then they just walked away because they had no grass to eat. And if you don't have anything to eat, they can't supply any milk, so they just had the calf and let it die. I mean, that's pretty rough. Verse 6. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake. For our backsliding are many. We have sinned against thee. We have sinned. Those are probably the three three words the Lord loves to hear the most. Now, what is the solution here? Do you know there's a solution? Oh, yeah. Let's read about it. Good old Deuteronomy 11. 
All right, in Deuteronomy 11, I guess we'll do Deuteronomy 11.11. 11. I don't want to read this whole chapter, so... I mean, it's not necessary to real, read the whole chapter to understand what's going on. So Deuteronomy 11.11. 11. But the land, whither ye go to possess it, talking about the land of Israel, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Verse 13. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. You know, people say that uh, Paul changed the law. Well, that's not true. Actually, Jesus changed the law, but, you know, they asked Jesus, uh, what was the great commandment in the law? He said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor on these two Commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But did Jesus really change the law? No. Not really. I mean, verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. The first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Is there a solution here for the the drought. Yes, there is. Verse 16. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Uh, you want to worship the fallen angels that tried to kill God in the war in heaven, the rebellion? Really? Really? You, you you want to serve the fallen angels? They did. Satan tried to kill God. That's what usually happens in a war. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angels. And you want to serve and worship them? Well, then when there's a famine in the land and there's no rain, well, pray to Satan. Hey, uh, you know, ask Satan to give you rain. Oh, and let me know how that works out for you. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath wrath be kindled against you and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Oh yeah. And guess what? This is the solution. But you don't hear this taught in churches. I don't. Verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand. Huh. Bind them for a sign upon your hand. Or would you rather have 666? Your choice. That they may be as frontlets between your eyes. 
and ye shall teach them your children. Oh boy, we haven't done that in public schools since 1964. Speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou raisest, risest up. Yep. So when you sit down, when you walk, when you lie down, and when you wake, get awake, should be teaching this to your kids. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if, if, that's a conditional covenant, people, if, for if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave un, unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Huh. What's the opposite of that? When you ignore all this, uh, then the great mighty nations are going to possess you. And they're going to come in and take everything you have. Oh, wait, that's happening right now, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know that um, I was turned down a job by the post office? Now, I'm a veteran. Veterans get hiring preference. Do you know that I was turned down for a job with the post office? You know why? The HR director told me point blank, I can't hire you. I go, why? You're a white male. I've got too many white males. No, not M-A-I-L. No. Too many white M-A-L-E's. I guess I could have gone back and says, well, I identify as a bi, whatever, tri, you know, whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's my white privilege. Oh, well. Verse 24. Every place where on the soles of your, of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness in Lebanon, from the river... The river Euphrates, even under the uttermost sea, shall be uh, shall your coast be. And there shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Oh, okay. On the right hand, you get a blessing. On the left hand, you get a curse. Which one do you want, buddy boy? Girly girl, which one you want? A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Ooh. Uh, yeah. All right, go to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 28. I don't want to read the whole chapter. But uh, Solomon is dedicating the temple, and he is making a request. So 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 28. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there. 
that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy. You know, you don't hear this kind of stuff preached in churches. Why? Well, they'll tell you, oh, God doesn't have any enemies. His people don't have any enemies. Everybody can be saved. You know, God just loves everybody. Read Malachi chapter 1 if you believe that. But they won't. They won't read that kind of stuff. No, John 3:16, that's about all they that's about all they can handle. God so loved the world. Yeah. Yeah, well, the same Bible that says for God so loved the world also says love not the world. Yeah. When thy people be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against thee. We're reading verse 33 here. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Verse 35. Listen to this. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain. What did we read about in Jeremiah? No rain, no grass, no nothing, right? When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. Because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin. Turn from their sin when thou afflictest them. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain unto thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, what's pestilence? Disease, blasting. Um, I'm not exactly sure what blasting is. I'm thinking that's uh, too much wind. Mildew. Mildew's nasty people. Let me tell you what. Mildew's like mold. You get black mold. You get black mold in your lungs, you're dead. There's no cure. That stuff's nasty. When um, when Florida had a hur some hurricanes, the roofs would blow off and it would rain and it would go down the walls and the walls would just turn into black mold and that stuff just... It's in the air, and you breathe it in, and then it takes root in your lungs, and then you're, you're, it's a slow, painful death, and there's no way to cure it, because everything that kills the mold kills the you. Oh, yeah, they got a drug that'll kill the, uh, the mold in your lungs, but guess what? Your liver will fail. You can't live without your liver, and the doctor is not going to want to give you the drug, because when your liver fails and you die, uh, your family's going to sue him. So better you, you know, he just says, well, sorry. Sorry, Charlie. So, 
If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts. Do you know there's been plagues? If, well, if you could believe the news, there's been plagues of locusts in the Middle East and in, uh, I think it's Afghanistan and Pakistan. You know what a swarm of locusts can do to a, a, a field of crops? They can devour it in a matter of hours. Or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. You know, you could read that whole chapter, 1 Kings 8. You could read the whole thing. It's, it's all in there, people. But I'm going to do a quick uh, thing here on 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 24. A second witness, if you will. And if thy people, Israel, be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return... And confess thy name in prayer, and pray, and make supplication before thee in this house. Then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because, uh, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk, and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. All right, so now you know the um, solution when there's famine, when there's... Uh, no rain when there's drought. All right, Jeremiah 14, verse 7. O Lord, through our iniquities, oh, I'm sorry, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many, we have sinned against thee. O the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in time of trouble. Why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land, and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonished, astonied, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not, you know, don't leave us. Please, Lord, don't leave us. Thus saith the Lord unto this people. Thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. Then said the Lord unto me, Oh boy, here it comes. Pray not for this people for their good. Can you imagine? You know, you never hear this preached or taught in a church. There comes a time when the Lord says, Don't pray for these people for their good. Don't pray for them. Don't pray for these people. I've had it with them. Verse 11. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. 
When they fast, I will not hear their cry. Well, why are they fasting? Because they don't have any food, right? <laughs> so, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings and oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, war, and by famine, and by pestilence. Um, you know, when you have war, well, if everybody is fighting, uh, who's in the field planting crops that you need for the food? Nobody. They're all out fighting. So if you got a war, famine usually follows the war. And what happens when you don't have any food? What follows that? Disease. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence, the disease. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. There's not going to be any war. Why, God loves us. We're his chosen people. He's not going to do that to us. Come on. You're all doom and gloom. You know, that's the, that's TBN channel. Verse 14. Listen to this, people. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. Ooh. Yeah, that sounds like TBN, doesn't it? Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies, lies in my name. I sent them not. I didn't send them. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. I didn't send them, I didn't give them a command, and I didn't speak to them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught. Naught means nothing. And the deceit of their heart. You know what the Bible says to do with false prophets? Kill them. Yeah, it's in the book of Leviticus or Numbers. I forget which one. Maybe it's in both. The Bible says if you had a prophet, give a prophecy, and the prophecy never happened, you were to stone them to death. And no, they're not supposed to overdose in weed. No. Because guess what? People would think twice before they gave a false prophecy. Yeah. Harold Camping, anybody? Jehovah's Witnesses, anybody? You know how many times that Jehovah's Witnesses prophesied the end of the world? At least three or four times. One time in my lifetime. Yeah. They should have taken the whole board of directors and stoned them to death. Instead, they lie and say, well, we never said that. And you misunderstood. You know, well, now we have new light. Yeah, you got new light from the angel of light. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them." 
Ugh. That don't sound good. Everybody's going to be dead and there's not going to be anybody to, alive to bury them. Verse 17. Therefore, thou shalt say this word unto them, Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken and a great breach with a very grievous blow. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword. And if I enter into the city, then behold them that are they then behold them that are sick with famine. Yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land that they know not. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? And there is no healing for us. We looked for peace, and there is no good. And for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Do not abhor us. What does abhor mean? Hatred. Extreme hatred. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Art not thou he, O Lord, our God? Therefore we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. You know, if you want to, you can read 1 Kings chapter 8 and 2 Chronicles 6. They are as applicable today as they were thousands of years ago. They are just as applicable. But sadly, instead of preaching repentance, your pastors want to preach tithes and tithings. It's vile. It really is. I honestly, I wish I could find a church. Not to be, not to be a teacher in necessarily. I mean, I wouldn't mind being a teacher in a church, but, you know, just to be a part of something. You know, it's just me here. I don't have anybody. But maybe that's the way the Lord wants it. I don't have very many distractions. I mean, I don't have... Most of my family's gone. And even the family I have left is virtually spiritually dead. May as well be dead. It's the way it goes, I guess. We... You know, the remnant is scattered all over the place. All over. It's sad. But that's the way it is. God warned us. You know, in the days of Elijah, um, there were probably millions of Israel and the Lord said there was like, what, seven or 8,000 that hadn't bowed the knee, knee to Baal or Baal out of a million. That's less than 1%. Do you realize that? That's less than 1%. Yeah. Less than 1%. That's a remnant. That's a remnant. That's a tithe of a tithe. Of a tithe. <laughs> So, all right, everybody, that concludes Jeremiah chapter 14. Chaplain Bob Walker here. 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.